Welcome to Heaven, a model for life and ministry here on earth with Bill Johnson. This session is entitled Restored to His Purpose. Take your Bibles open to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 1. Let me give you some introduction to this. There are some things that I've shared with you over the couple years that I've been here. I, I did a teaching in one of the Sunday school classes we had about three months ago, two months ago. <clears throat> We're going to basically repeat that. We're going to do a study. And what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to give you a series of lessons, series of teachings on a principle that basically states this. Church, our model is heaven. Heaven is our model. It's the model for all ministry. It's the model for all prayer. We discover the purpose, the eternal purpose of God for the church in that model. And so we're going to start, we're going to kind of back the story up because I've got at least four weeks of things to share with you on this. And uh, something, I've taught some of these things for years. Um, it'll be familiar to many of you. But something began to open up for me in a brand new way in January of this year. And uh, I've been kind of mulling it over, and when I travel, I experiment on other churches, and if they still stay together when I'm through teaching them, then I figure it's okay to bring home, you know? <laughs> and as uh, far as I know, all the churches, they're all still serving God, so eventually we'll get to that particular, uh, I think that's the third week in this particular series, uh, the way it's laid out right now. But I want you to go to Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to talk about the heaven being the model. But we're going to, first we need to look at and discover the purposes of God for the church. So I'm going to need you to work with me this morning on this once again as we get into the Word. Genesis 1, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them. God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. I want you to take verse 28 again. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. Now we're going to look at several passages of Scripture this morning, um, so uh, be ready to turn the pages here with me. But I want to give you kind of a, a backdrop, a setting here. First I want you to realize <clears throat> everything has been created. God has now created Adam and Eve, and a serpent is soon to appear to give them a temptation, an option of eating from a tree that had fruit on it that was forbidden. Most everybody knows the story where God gave Adam and Eve instructions as he put them into his garden. And he said, you can eat from everything in here, but there is one tree that you're not to eat from. Isn't, it, isn't that just like God? Give us so many wonderful things to do, and then there was just only one that they couldn't do. And uh, it's just like the Father to do that, to really set us up to succeed. So many think that the commandments of God are really set up to cause us to fail, but it's quite the opposite. God has been so liberal and so general, uh, generous with us. And uh, so the Lord gives this commandment, and soon comes a serpent. Now what I want to, the point I need to make to you about this is Satan fell from heaven, fell into rebellion before Adam and Eve were ever created. In fact, what I want you to see is that according to uh, Isaiah, or excuse me, according to Revelation 12, it talks about the dragon, which is the devil, sweeping a third of the stars under his control. How many of you remember the fact that when the devil was cast out of heaven, when he fell because of rebellion, Isaiah 14 talks about this rebellion where Satan, he was called Lucifer at that time, a son of the morning, uh, that he, he would... Uh, he would compare himself to God, and he said, I want to exalt my throne. I want to make it equal to God. I want to be worshipped like, every, like everyone worships God. I want to exalt and establish myself as the king, as, as the one who, who people would put their focus on, and, and the angelic host specifically would, would be able to worship. And he was wanting to take the place of God or be next to God and to compete with him for the worship of all creation. 
And Satan was cast down out of heaven because of that rebellion. And the Bible says that a third of the angels fell with him. Let me give you just a little bit of a background here. We know that there's this angelic host that's created. We don't know how many of them there are, but we know a third of them were kicked out of heaven when Lucifer fell. The implication is, is that because there are three archangels, there were three primary head military type figures in the angelic host. And when Satan fell, that left two, it implies that each of them had a third of the angelic host under their charge. I want you to see all that God has made lives in absolute perfect order. It's almost as a, like governmental position. There was Lucifer, there are those under him and those under them. And there was this charge that Lucifer had in heaven. There are three primary angels in heaven before the fall of Lucifer. They were Gabriel, Michael, and Lucifer. Gabriel is the one that we see appearing to um, Elizabeth, John the Baptist's mother. Uh, he appeared to Mary. He's the one who seems to show up whenever a proclamation, a declaration, announcement needs to be made. He seems to be the, uh, the messenger man of heaven making the great declarations of what God is saying. Michael, on the other hand, is found in Scripture to be the warring angel. He seems to be the one in charge of, of uh, he, he was the one who brought military reinforcement for Daniel when Daniel was crying out to God for an answer, and Michael came forth from heaven and, and brought a great deliverance for an angel to be loose to bring an, angel, uh, an answer to Daniel. And so we see Gabriel, the messenger angel. We see Michael, the um, warring angel. And then we see Lucifer. There's a lot of controversy on this, and I don't want to be dogmatic on it, but there are some translations that actually describe Lucifer's physical being as being a living musical instrument. If that is the case, then it is quite possible that he led the choirs of heaven. I think it's really uh, one of the, if that is true, that could reveal to us or expose to us one of the reasons he fights so hard against the people of God coming before God in worship and to bless and to honor the Lord for who he is. He was caught up in his own beauty and, and all of the angels that followed him were kicked out of heaven with him. Now where did they go? There was already something in existence that God had made. Revelation 12 says that the dragon, the devil, swept a third of the stars under their control. Think with me for a moment. It just may be possible that that reference is, in fact, to literal stars or planets that the enemy would inhabit. If that is the case, then we know that planet Earth was one of those. Even if that isn't the case, we know that planet Earth was one of those. Because when Adam and Eve were created and they were put in that garden, that place that had perfect order and perfect rule, Adam and Eve were placed there. The serpent came and brought temptation to them, trying to lure them to be like God, tried to infect them with his own personal disease. It's a bizarre thing because man was made in the image of God. And then the serpent comes along to try to get them a shortcut to something else. Planet Earth was already inhabited by the devil, and it's quite possible that it was his capital city of all that he reigned over in the planets that he had charge over. If, in fact, the dragon did sweep a third of the stars under his domain. God, after the fall of Lucifer, created man. And he created man in his image. Now, angels that fell and rebel against God are offered no chance for redemption. Jesus, the Son of God, did not die for angels. Angels were given a unique place in all of God's creation. It's a mystery to them why God himself would put on flesh, come to earth and die, so that people that rejected him, who lived willfully in sin, could be forgiven. It's a mystery to angels. It's something that's outside of what they are able to comprehend. They have no way to experience that for themselves. God took planet Earth, and in one small part of it, he put a garden. And in that garden was perfect order. What does that imply? Outside of that garden, there wasn't perfect order. 
in that garden is where Adam and Eve were to live and to do what? Be fruitful and multiply, subdue, take dominion. Now everybody knows the devil is absolutely zero threat to God. It's not like there's a contest. It's not like there's this great war in the heavenlies and man, we, we, you know, we just need to read the press reports every day to see how God's doing. There is a law written into nature that illustrates the superiority of God who is not a created being. He is eternal. The devil is created. There's a law in nature that illustrates this, that when you go into a room and you turn the lights on, darkness leaves, period. There is no debate. I don't care if it's a match. I don't care how dark that room is. A match will cause darkness to flee. And God is light. There is no contest. I want you to see the heart of God here. God looks at planet Earth. He looks at something that was taken over by a part of fallen creation. And in his wisdom, he creates man and woman in his own image. Do you know that every person in this room represents a facet of the nature of God, the character and the person of God that no other person represents. When it says that you were made in the image of God, that I was made in the image of God, we're not looking at a cookie cutter God who just said, well, I'll just make you all with a body, a soul, and a spirit, and we'll just, we'll just kind of punch you out like that, and you're all in my image. No, every person represents something of this multifaceted, glorious, glorious Father Every person on the planet represents something about that father that no other human being on the planet represents. We were made in his image. And God created us with purpose. He did not create us to sit on, on clouds and play harps and to float around for eternity. He created us to have dominion from the get-go, from the very start. When Adam and Eve were created, they were planted in, in, a, in a hostile environment and they were there to subdue. They were planted in the midst of a place representing God, representing his rule, representing his reign. And they were commanded, now, as you're able, you multiply. And as you have kids, and they have kids, and they have kids, we will extend the boundary of this garden until the entire planet is covered with my rule. And just as happened with Germany in World War II, when Berlin fell, Germany fell. And when planet Earth, the capital city of the enemy's rule with his fallen angels, if it's true that he swept a third of the stars under his domain, then it would be also true that this capital city, once it falls by people made in the image of God, walking in obedience to God, extending the boundaries of his rule till the whole planet is covered, once the capital city falls, the entire government of darkness falls. However, there's a problem. The problem came with the stupid apple or whatever that fruit was. The serpent came to Eve and she partook of the fruit that was forbidden. The Bible teaches a very important principle, two that I'll mention here regarding sin. Number one, the soul that sins shall die. Number one. Number two, we are slaves of the one we obey. Now, slavery is not allowed anymore in this country, which I'm very thankful for. But if slavery was allowed, if you were sold into slavery, anything you owned became the possession of the new master. Do you understand this? All right. What I want you to see here is I want you to see this commissioning of Genesis 1. Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, take dominion. I want you to see that represented, uh, represented by these keys. They were keys of authority that God handed to mankind. And he basically is saying, listen, live under my rule, and in living under my rule, you have the authority to extend my rule until it covers the globe. 